Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving some problems dealing with the notion of basic division. Basic division, and today is our lesson number eight, not seven. Today is our lesson number eight. We are going to do some sample problems that you see at the very bottom of page number seven. This one to page number seven. At the very bottom, you will see. At the very bottom, you will see what they term as sample problems. There are five of them. That's what we're going to do right now. Let's get going, okay? As I reminded you yesterday, day number seven, and as I reminded you when we were doing the multiplication problems, that in order for you to do your multiplication problems and division problem efficiently, and of course correctly, you, you must know your timetables. You must know your timetables by heart. Otherwise, you're going to struggle in the exam. You're going to end up making some silly mistakes. You're going to end up losing points on very simple problems just because you did not memorize your tables. You must know your timetables 1 through 12 by heart. If you need help, the videos are there. Just watch day 1 through 12 in a series of basic math. In a series of basic math, day 1 through 12 will teach you the timetables from 1 through 12, as I said. And also, in addition to that, after before finish doing the five problems that we are about to do, sample problems on the bottom of page number 7, if you feel that you need more help, if you if you feel that you need more help, if you feel that you need more practice on these division problems, there are plenty more problems that you can do there. Division problems on day number 16, 24, 25, 26, 27, 77, 79, and 92. Again, in the series of basic math. Just type in basic math, day 16, the same series, and watch the videos, and you will know, you will learn how to do these division problems without the long division. Because if you do the long division, that takes a very long time, you know, which is why it's called the long division. It's a baby version. You must do those problems in a grown-up method. For example, for example, the very first one is sample problem number one. They are asking us to do 132 over 11. So that's exactly what we will do. Let's get going. You will see it goes very quickly. How many 11s does one have? One has no, no 11. One has no 11. That one goes and joins the 3 and becomes 13. How many 11s does 13 have? 13 has 1 11. 13 has 1 11. After we use up 11 from the 13, we have a remainder of 2. That remainder of 2 is going to go and join this 2 and become 22. And 22 has 2 11s. That's it. We're done. If you want to verify it, you can very quickly verify it here. Multiply 12 by 11. Again, we're not going to multiply. Uh, we are not going to multiply one digit at a time. We're going to multiply. We're going to multiply by eleven as a as a whole. Eleven times two is twenty-two. Two carry two. Eleven times one is eleven. Plus two is thirteen. We could have multiplied instead of multiplying eleven by twelve times eleven. We could have also done eleven times twelve. It, it would not. It would not change anything. It would not change anything. Again, we're not going to multiply by two and by one step by step like a baby. We're going to do it together. We're going to multiply by 12. 12 times 1 is 12. 2 carry 1. 12 times 1 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. As you can see, it doesn't matter how you do it. We get back to what we started out with 132, which tells us that our answer is correct. 132 divided by 11 is indeed 12. In other words, 12 11s are 132. Which is, which is just as well, because we know that 12 12s are 144. That's another thing you must know. You must know your squares. 12 12s are 144. So if you were to take away 112 from it, you learn, it should end up with 132. And if this is 12 12, this should be 11 12. Makes logical sense that if 12 12s are 144, then 144 minus 12, whatever that quantity is, must represent 11 12s. 11 12s are 132, as we just found. Number two, nine thousand six hundred eighteen divided by three. Well, dividing by three is very simple. Three table is very straightforward. So let's get going. How many threes does nine have? Nine has three threes. 
How many trees does six have? Six has two trees. You see how quickly it goes? How many trees does one have? One has no trees. That one goes and joins the eight and becomes eighteen. How many trees does eighteen have? Eighteen has six trees. There you go. That's your answer. Three thousand two hundred and six. Three thousand two hundred and six. Now, if you wish at this point, if you wish it, if you wish at this point to take a few seconds, on uh, the five ten seconds to verify your answer. So it's not a, it's not a, it's not a bad idea. It's actually a very good idea. It's a small premium to, premium to pay to buy the insurance, to buy the peace of mind that it, it is in fact the correct answer. Let's find out, shall we? We're going to multiply this ans our answer by 3 and see if we can get back to what we started with. 6 3s are 18, 8 carry 1, it com comes down right here because that's just 0. 6 2s are 6, uh, 3 3 2s are 6, and 3 3s are 9, you see. Like I said, it only takes a few seconds. Let's do the next one. Number 3. Number three that we are about to do is even simpler than this. It's very straightforward, very simple. Number three, we're just dividing by two. Can't be any easier than that. 2,466 divided by two. 2,466 divided by two. This is in fact so easy. That you don't have to do anything at all. Just look at it. It's going to be one, two, three, three. How many twos does two have? Two has one, two. How many twos does four have? Four has two twos. How many threes does six have? Six has three twos. And how many twos does six have? Six has three twos. There is your answer. 1,233. 1, and if you were to multiply 1,233 by two, you will get back what we started out with. I'm not going to do it because it's too simple. Number four. Three hundred and twenty-five. Three hundred and twenty-five. Is that right? Did I read correctly? Three hundred and twenty-five divided by thirteen. Now this is where you have to know your thirteen tables. The table of thirteen. You must know it by heart. Now I kept saying a little while ago up to twelve. Up to twelve is a, is a must. Now if you can memorize your table up to fifteen, that's even better. But up to twelve is a must. You understand? Let's divide by thirteen, shall we? How many thirteen does three have? Three has no thirteen. Three has no thirteen. Three is three is too puny to have any thirteen. Three cannot take on a thirteen. So what does three do? Three goes to his neighbor, to Mr. Two, and says, "Why don't we gang? Why don't we gang up together? You can't take on three thirteen by yourself. I can't take on thirteen by myself. Let's gang up together, and they become thirty-two. They form thirty-two. How many thirteens does thirty-two have? Thirteen times two, you should know, is twenty-six. Thirteen twos are twenty-six. Thirty-two has two. Thirty-two has two thirteens. After we take away twenty-six, after we take away twenty-six from thirty-two, well, we know that thirty minus twenty-six would have been four. Would have been four. It's hypothetical. We don't have thirty. We have thirty-two. So if thirty minus twenty-six would have been four, therefore thirty-two minus twenty-six should be six. You must follow the logic, you must follow the pattern, it's just a matter of paying attention, it's, a matter, it's just a matter of having the concentration. If you don't have the concentration, you're going to muck it up. Do you understand? Muck it up with an M, as in Mary, not an F. Okay, don't get excited. So, 26 we established, has, it makes uh, two thirteens. After we take away 26, we have a remainder of 6. The 6 goes and joins the 5, becomes 65. That's how, we, that's how you should talk, that's fa that fast, do you understand? And 65 has 5 thirteens. And how do we know 65 has 5 thirteens? Because we just know it. We just have to know it. Or if you like, you can just do it out. We have 65 multiplied by 5 and you'll see it. 13 times 5 is 65. 3 fives are 15. That's 5. Carry 1. 5 on the 5 and 6. Answer is 25. Now at this point, if you want to verify it very quickly as to what is 25 times 13, you can do that. You can verify your answer. It doesn't take that long. It is very quick. Very simple. Let's verify it, shall we? So, 13 times 25. 13 times 25. And again, we're not going to multiply it by 5 and then by 2. We're not babies. We're going to do it as a grown-up person. We're going to multiply the whole bloody thing by 25. 25 times 3. 3 25 is a 75. So, that's a 5. Carry a 7. Are you with me? 25 times 1 is 25. 25 plus a 7, 25 plus a 5 would have been 30. Therefore, 25 plus 7 would be 32. 
There you go. 325. That was number four. Let's do the very last one on the page. Number five. Five thousand and twenty-four. Number five. Five thousand and twenty-four divided by eight. Divided by eight. Now pay very close attention here, because you have to know your table of eight. And if you do not know your table of eight, you're gonna end up you you're gonna end up having to do it in a simpler way, and you're gonna end up wasting more time than is required here, than is necessary here. You're gonna end up doing extra steps if you do not know your table of eight. I cannot emphasize enough, I keep repeating like a parrot to you, it is vital, it is crucial, it is essential, it is imperative that you know your tables, timetables, 1 through 12. How many 8 does 5 have? 5 has no 8s. 5 is too puny to have any 8. 5 goes and joins the 0, becomes 50. How many 8 does 50 have? Well, we know 8, 6 is a 48. How do we know that? Well, we know that because we memorized our table. We know our tables by heart. Six eights are forty-eight. Six eights are forty-eight. So fifty crosses out. We have six eights are forty-eight. The remainder, of, re remaining two, goes and joins this two, and become twenty-two. How many eight does twenty-two have? Twenty-two has two eights. Two eights are sixteen. Two eights are sixteen. After we take away sixteen from the twenty-two, we know. 20 minus 16 would have been 4, therefore 22 minus 16 should be 6. That 6 is going to go and joins this 4 and become 64. And 64 has 8 4s. 64 has 8 4s and how do we know that? Because 8 squared is 64. We, we should know your squares. You understand? You must know your squares by heart, 1 through 10. If you, if you want to save time in the exam, you should know your squares 1 through 10. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. Just like that. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. All your squares, 1 through 10. Do you understand? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 100. So this is one way of doing it if you know your table of 8. If you have trouble with, the, if you are struggling, if you do not, if you're not sure about your ability to solve this thing by eight, if you don't want to take the chance, if you feel that you might end up making a mistake when you try to divide by eight, you can do this. You can do the process in two steps. Let's do it in two steps. I'm going to show you how to do it in two steps. Five thousand and twenty-four. We are told to divide it by eight. Instead of dividing it by eight in one shot like we did here, let's do it by four. Let's divide top and bottom by four. We're going to divide top and bottom by 4 and then once we have done the division by 4 then we're going to divide the answer by 2 again and that's the same thing as dividing something by 8. If you need to divide by something by 8 and you, if you take that quantity and divide first by 4 and then the answer by 2, well that's 8. 4 times 2 is 8. We do it in two steps. If you don't want to do it in one step, if you don't want to divide by 8 directly, divide by 4 and then 2. Do you understand? Or 2 and then 4. It's up to you. But it makes more sense to do the 4 first because you will have less work later on. How many fours does five have? Five has one four. Five has one four. You with me? The remaining one go. Remaining one is going to go and join the zero and becomes and it's going to become ten. How many fours does ten have? Ten has two fours. Ten has two fours. After we take away two fours, which is eight, two fours are eight. If, after we take away eight from the ten, the remaining two goes and joins this two and becomes twenty-two. Becomes twenty-two. And how many fours does 22 have? 22 has five fours. Five fours are 20. Again, after we take away 20 from the 22, the 2 goes and joins the 4 and becomes 24. And how many fours does 24 have? 24 has six fours. And since we divided the top by 4, we must divide the bottom by 4. Same thing here, we divide the top by 4, so we, we, we divide the top by 8, so we divide the bottom by 8, and it becomes 1, which is why our answer is 628. Except here, we have to go one more round. I just made a mistake. Did you notice I made a mistake because I was too busy babbling? We divide the top by 4, we must divide the bottom by 4, and we divide 8 by 4, the answer is not 4, the answer is 2. 
This is where we end up making silly mistakes. This is where you have to pay attention. As I said already many times in the past and, and in this video also, it's just a matter of attention. It's just a matter of paying, uh, having proper concentration. Otherwise, you will make mistakes. Everybody does. You, your concentration cannot lapse like mine just did here. So now we have a two, we're going to divide top and bottom by two, that should go very fast. How many twos does one have? One has no twos. That one goes and joins the six and becomes twelve, and twelve has six twos. That's a good sign because we have a six here. How many twos does five have? Five has two twos. Five has two twos. The remaining one goes and joins the six, becomes sixteen, and sixteen has eight twos. You see? Six hundred and twenty-eight. Six hundred and twenty-eight is the answer. That was it. That was the last problem on the page. We're going to stop here. There are some more sample problems on the next page, which we'll do in the next video, because otherwise the video will be too long. There are five more problems, and some of them actually quite nasty. Why don't you try doing this problem on your own as a homework, 6 through 10. Now you know how to do this division in this method. You should do these problems with me as we, as we as I'm doing the problem on the blackboard, you must do the problems with me. Don't just sit there passively staring at the screen. You must have a notebook in your hand, you must have your textbook in your hand, you must have a pencil and an eraser. You must pause the video each time before I, when I set up the problem. Do it yourself. Once you learn the once you learn the method, once you understand what's going on, that's how you do it, that's how we learn, that's how we get better at something. By doing it ourselves. I know I'm pointing out the bloody obvious. That's just a reminder. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.